Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. I thought we'd start today on Zdenek Krejci, uh, because we've not seen him for a little while, and, well, he's, he's sort of improving a little bit, but look at those mental stats. It's just incredible for a player of 18 to be that good in the head. And one thing I used to do back on the old videos was do squad reports sometimes, so I'm going to start incorporating that into the very beginning of the analysis videos, so where we'll go through each individual player like this, just so you guys can see how the attributes are improving, just see any extra stats that I might miss, basically. So we're going to start doing that on the very beginning of the analysis video, so if that's something you want to see, you you only have to watch the beginning of it, basically. Also, a couple more players have now been sponsored by folks over on the Patreon, so that's very, very cool indeed. Uh, Victor Christensen is now sponsored by Alex Watts, so thank you for that. And Mark Yakim, of course, having a fantastic season, is now sponsored by Jim Morningwood. So massive thank you to both of you guys and everyone else over there as well. Right, let's get into things. So no more beating around the bush. We've been drawn against Benfica in the first round, or yeah, the first round, if you like, first knockout round of the Champions League. Could have been a lot worse, frankly. There were some big sides that we could have got drawn against, although Benfica did win a group that had Real Madrid in it. So they, and they have won the Champions League before. They won it in the very first season of this save. So this is not your grandfather's Benfica. Or actually, it's probably quite similar to your grandfather's Benfica, frankly. And interestingly, PSG got Bayern Munich. So no matter which position we'd finish, I think we could have taken Bayern. And I believe that we're capable of beating Benfica over two legs. That's just my theory. Um... I don't recognise any of their players, unfortunately, apart from... Sh I think they've got Chris Christopher Ayer. That's the only one I recognise, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, I realise just by showing you this screen, I have given away how we finished in a couple of these games, but we'll quickly go over it. Against Midland, we were very, very poor um, away from home, despite playing a full-strength team, basically, and we were beaten 1-0, our first defeat of the season in the league. Very disappointed in it, but what can you do? And in the most recent game, our reserve team basically uh, got us a nice win at home against Esbjerg. Mark Yakim grabbing himself another couple of goals, taking his tally to 13. We then did concede a penalty, though, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. And that, of course, leaves the league looking like this. We're back to being six points clear, though, as Midland went and lost their next game after pulling us back a tiny little bit. So we're still doing fine, but that one defeat is going to really bug me. Hopefully, at some point, we will get the unbeaten season. Midland's still in second. Randa's had a, a little bit of a blip, but have picked it up again with a couple of wins against sides from the bottom half and have given themselves, now I feel, a really good chance of qualifying for the championship group. Seven points clear. Uh, FC Copenhagen now well and truly in there, too. Um, still lagging behind, 22 points behind us. And they're still going to struggle, but I think they'll still end up coming in second. They always find a way. Or we're going to Lingby, however, very much on the precipices of, um, well, bad things, basically. But what I imagine you're even more interested in is, did we manage to hang on to everybody? Yes, but with a caveat in the someone has left, but it actually wasn't to do with the board, nor was it to do with me specifically. They just wanted to leave and we couldn't do anything about it. But we'll talk about that in a sec. So a bid came in from PSG and I rejected it, of course. Miranda complained and I said about the atmosphere and he said, I don't care. And I said, go go talk to Carl Rogers Jr. And he said, I don't care. And then I had to sort of talk to him and said that I would accept a bid if one came in. And unfortunately, one did uh, from PSG. And now we lost our goalkeeper. Um, thankfully, because I figured it was going to happen, I went out searching for another goalkeeper. We have at least found a replacement slash backup kind of goalkeeper to fill the boots there, which is still a bit of a pain because I don't want to lose this guy. And the, the fee wasn't great either. 8 million up front rising to 12 million. I mean, it's good money, but it's really only about 5 million up front. And the other clauses are based around like ridiculous things like 50 international appearances and stuff and i couldn't negotiate because it was a non-negotiable bid which really pissed me off um but it just had to happen unfortunately thankfully though I, I was able to sign a replacement and this is him this is jose angel we've signed him from atletico madrid well atletico madrid b technically he put in a transfer request and requested to leave and we were only able we only had to pay 1.2 million for the guy and i think he's decent enough he's the same kind of level as a mower but i've put him straight into the first team based purely on the fact that he's got that potential and i, I think this guy could grow into something really really decent he's got a long contract he's not on loads of money and i think you know we make 8 million one way and we spend 1.2 minutes so we're building up a nice transfer kitty uh, and in case you're wondering i am still planning potentially to go after clayton if we can get the money together i've got nearly 9 million i think in the bank at the moment and if the board add to that in the summer i might well be able to go after clayton he might be the only signing of the summer but he will be a signing potentially unless he goes somewhere else which could very much happen. I also sold uh, James Ward Prowse to Midland for 50k because to get the wages off the bill. Admittedly, we are paying a little bit of his wages, which is a bit of annoying, um, but I felt like it was worth it just to get him out the way for a little bit, make a little bit of money, and give him a place to be happy, basically. So we're back to having only uh, regens again on the team. Now, we have the first leg at home, which is good in a way, but it does leave us a bit. We need to get a good result here. We win the game. Get a couple of goals, just get the win. Because going to Portugal is going to be difficult. You know it is. Okay, so they're going pretty much as standard as you can imagine. Uh, with a deep line forward, and I guess it's... Um so Rassibar is the guy we're going to have to try and mark up the most. He's going to be their main man. But yeah, it's Christopher Ayer is the only player I recognise. Some of these guys might also be real players. I just don't recognise them off the top of my head. So standard ice picky tactic. Uh, not that team, of course. We want the first string. However, Bravo picked up a knock in preseason or like 
off season, then came back and then picked up another knock, and he's still going to be out for. Yeah, three. Oh, he wouldn't have played anyway because he's still suspended from his idiocy in the last game. Uh, okay, so that means. Oh, what do we do? Rally, rack, rally, Yakim. Or Kuja. I feel like he's the one that's earned his place in this team from the way he's played. Uh, Akinola, Sorgord, Jankowski. Kunia's also got an injury, which is a pain in the ass. And Olsen is not really very fresh at the moment, uh, which could be a bit of a problem for us as well. We did actually accept a bid for Carl Rogers Jr., but he turned down the contract because his contract's up in the summer and we were offered uh, nearly a million pounds from Kansas City to go back to his old club, which is kind of nice. I thought it was a full circle for him, but he turned down the contract from them. So he is still here and will probably leave for free in the summer because he's fallen down the pecking order somewhat this year, although he has to put in some great performances, I have to say. On the bench, Amoa, Marinus, Krejci, Rally, Safi, Stan, and Kuja. So lots of options off the bench with Krejci, uh, Rally. It, it's, a, it's a much, much stronger looking bench, and I'm a fan of that. Right, let, let's get into this. This is crunch time. Win the home game first, and we can deal with getting mugging them off with the counter-attacking player in the second game. That's my, my, my plan anyway. Can I just say how cool it is that we're very near the end of the uh, FM18 cycle and the fact that there's still like nearly, well, around 2,000 of you watching these videos every time I put them out is bloody ridiculous. But thank you. That's awesome. We've got one job, basically. Beat Benfica today. I, I think we're capable of doing it. Our home record is fantastic. Barring another Bravo incident, like we should have beaten Leipzig too, I think we can get the win on the night today. And it's just a question of what we do in Portugal. So, question of the day. And today's question is this. Has there ever been a save idea that you've had that you thought would be too long or boring to actually be worth doing? Yeah, I think there kind of was. Like before the B67 idea, which admittedly I was very much on the fence about whether this would be too long and boring to risk doing as well. Why is everything so slow? But yeah, I had an idea um, of trying to win the French Cup and therefore the Champions League with a team outside of Europe. Because in theory, teams from like the Reunion Islands and French dependencies are able to enter the French Cup. And I wanted to see if we could do it in FM and try and qualify for the Champions League via the French Cup or like, you know what I mean, Europa League, Champions League, like that. Uh, it would have been a ridiculously difficult task. And I think that would have just taken way too long. But hey, an idea for you if you fancy something ridiculous uh, to try that out. But yeah, have you ever had a, a save idea that you just thought would be too long or boring in a way uh, in terms of the build-up to actually be worth doing? Let me know in the comments and if you have any ideas for a question of the day drop those in the comments too with the hashtag qotd very very slow paced start so far so tar loses the ball to pinto um Perisato, caldera pinto's into the space uh we've got enough players in the box to should be able to clear this uh oh yeah no i thought we considered a penalty or something there alex pinto for benfica just get through the early danger oh oh peter silly silly man um and we're about to concede an away goal peter Sorgod. The players have gone off the rails in the last few games. We've been so composed for the most part in this group, all the way up until that game against RB Leipzig. Anur steps up, and it's a goal for Benfica after six, uh, sorry, five minutes on the clock, and Benfica lead through Uno Turan, and now they have an away goal, and we have a problem here. This is, like I said, this is not your mother's Benfica. Um, they are a very, very good European side these days. I wonder what made that happen in this save. 21 minutes on the clock, at home against Benfica, and we've not had a single shot in this match. Some days you just do not seem to be up for it. And today seems to be one of those days. Mateus Olsen, unfortunately, a lack of fitness levels because he played the last game. Um, Jankowski, we just need something here. Find an equalizer. Find a cheeky one. Svenningsen's in. Oh, God, that was the chance. Svenningsen, is he offside? Nope, that was a goal kick, which means that we should have scored there. Svenningsen has the chance to just level things up for us nice and clearly. And, ooh, oh, no, never mind. Right, I'm really going to have to think about what to do here. We just don't look at the races at the moment. Benfica just look completely cut above. You, you can see why they won their group if they're playing like this. Oh my god, it's 2-0 to Benfica in the first half. We're, we're dreadful. Um, I don't know. Ever since we've come back after Christmas, the league games have looked unconvincing. And we're 2-0 down at home to Benfica now. And they just look a cut above us, frankly. We had enough players in the box to surely win this. And it's just fallen straight to them. And it's in the back of the net for 2-0 to Benfica. Right, what on earth are we going to do now? we are turn the push forward. I'm also going to go on to attacking. Um, because what choice have we really got here? We're going to get stuck in and really try and force ourselves into this. Look for the overlaps. Get these wingers down those positions. I don't know. Half-time team talk is going to have to be something magical. Utterly woeful. Um, Just, I don't even know what to say. Shocking. This is going to require some absolutely mammoth effort now. I think the, the I think basically the tie is pretty much finished in the first half of the first game, which is exactly what we did not need, frankly. Um, I don't even know. Yes, he does need to be marked directly. Absolutely. Who's been piss poor? I'm going to yank Surgord off. He's been shocking. To so is Akinola as well, to be fair. Going to get Krejci in for Surgord. Akinola. No, we've got really no options in those positions, do we? Um, I don't know. Everyone's just playing appallingly, unfortunately. Not having Cunha is a problem too, because that's an area where we really do get a lot of joy in those wide positions. Mikowski. To whip one in for us, maybe. Nope. 
headed away. It's a tar, maybe, to find a good cross. There's plenty of players in the box for him to pick out. Krejci's one of them. Yakim's another one, and it's 2-1. Right. Mark Yakim gets us back into this tie, sort of. Um, we've got half an hour with which to rescue this game. If we pull this off from here, then that would be quite some effort, but it doesn't excuse the dreadful play in the first half. Sotar does well. Krejci just knocks this around the court. Oh, back heel. And Mark Yakim stepping up to the plate there and rising to the occasion, unlike Svenningson today. We should be 2-2 really if we take that other chance, but they've had chances too. I'm going to get Marinus on, on the other wing, because Olsen's knackered, unfortunately, and that's just a problem we've had. Uh, Rally, Svenningson's been really, really bad. But he's always got that little bit in him. You know what? Svenningson is doing nothing. I'm going to get Rally on, and we're also going to lump some ball into the box. Hit early crosses too, yeah. Just get some balls in there. See if Rally. Oh my God. And it, yeah. When it rains, it pours. Rally's been on the pitch less than three minutes, and now he's off. Um, what's the injury looking like? Probably a potential head injury. Good. So now the one player we've just brought on in order to try and get something there is now no longer on the pitch, and it's just up to Mark Yakim. And it's a free kick to Benfica. Owner steps up and it's round the post, but it's not going to matter. Benfica are going to come here to Greenland and win. Um, we just haven't turned up, basically. They haven't turned up. We've had injuries, penalties conceded. Just a perfect storm of nonsense, really. But we just didn't play well. We were dreadful. Three shots on target in a match at home. A unacceptable in every possible way. And now we've got, whoa, 4-4 four, four between Arsenal and, ben and Barcelona. Um, wow. That Stanis guy has just got four goals in the second half. Not bad. We've got one hell of a work. We're going to have to go full out attack at them in the second game of this. This is, I don't know how we're going to pull this off. I just really don't think we are. Anyway, we've got some games off camera. Join me in a sec for the Hail Mary pass. Right, so we've had four league games off camera in between the sort of, well, bad result at home against Benfica. There's no two ways about it. But anyway, the first game was a 4-2 victory at home against Vela. A pair of goals for Victor Christensen. He scored one goal all season, and the moment he gets sponsored by Alex Waltz, bam, two goals. Beautiful stuff. Seems like he's finally starting to play in that position very, very well. He's the only player we've got that's actually fully suitable for the attacking midfield role. Yakim grabbed one, safer grabbed a penalty. We did concede twice, though. Bit disappointing. Next up, we were away to a very poor Norgeland and got a very comfortable win, basically. Two early goals from Jonas Fenningsen and a Wogensen own goal where it hit the bar, bounced off the goalkeeper 3-0 up after 18 minutes they did get one back late through ryan walker but it wasn't enough they still played all right but we got the win next up in this little run against teams towards the bottom we had a 4-0 thumping of courier two goals for sani akinola both assisted by jonas fennington who then went on to grab two goals of his own and grab a 9.6 with two goals and two assists he's back on the assisting charts in the league and he's probably not far off on goals are they? he's having a really good season and finally, we're at home to bottom place Odense, who we really should have got more goals against, but it didn't matter because Victor Christensen, three goals uh, in his last two starts for the club. He's only got, I think, four, he's just been fantastic this year for us. Uh, I think he actually scored last year for us. It wasn't even this season. So he scored all three of his goals this season and his last two appearances. He really is starting to create that role and make it his own, getting shots and passes and just doing bloody brilliantly. Just quickly, that leaves the league looking like this. We're still 18 points above Midtjylland, who have pulled a 10-point gap and look very, very likely to get second spot this year. What a season they've had. Poulsen and Pat Moore have been fantastic for them. They really have had an excellent year. Ronders, though, are really slipping. They're only one point away with one game to go. I have a horrible feeling they're going to drop out of the championship group at the final hurdle, and that would really suck for them. Uh, Copenhagen have slipped down the pecking order a little bit as well, back to fifth as Allborg have got right up there, including beating Ronders, uh, which really did help them. Now, we did have a youth intake, but it wasn't even worth me capturing anything for it because this was the best player, Nikolai Lars. I mean, he's not a mate. He's not bad bad he'll be fine but he's nothing to write home about he's nothing you know he's not a Diego Maurizio or a Victor Christensen type of player unfortunately anyway what we're really here for is this we're away at Benfica we've got to go to Portugal and win winning away from home in Europe for us is very very difficult uh, let alone when it's against teams like Benfica who I've noticed have actually won the Portuguese league 10 years in a row since the start of this save I think they've won the league every single season just dominating Portuguese football so it's nowhere near as competitive as it was before I don't know what's happened to Sporting and Porto but yeah these guys are no mugs uh, let's put it that way and I think I would have preferred to have just won the group and got Bayern Munich because at least I know we've got a history of beating them these guys very different but because my assistant reckons they're going to play this system we're going to go all out and put that extra man into midfield but we're going to do something a little bit different so bravo technically could play but look at that he's only just become available again and unfortunately it's not the case uh, that he's going to be able to play do not worry though as i rested mark yakim in the last match to make sure that he could play today so yakim svensson svensson svenningson akinola sorgord jankowski satar kunia who is now back uh, nearly at full match fitness he's played a few games got an assist or two santos and vasic in the middle which is what i like to see and simovic there how 
However, I am tempted today to go with Zdenik Krejci uh, to give us a little bit more passing ability in the midfield. Um, because, I don't know, is there a better position for him, perhaps, in this midfield area? Yeah, deep-line playmaker, perhaps. But we've already got a deep-line playmaker in the team, and I don't really want to have two. So we might just keep him as a ball-winning midfielder for now. Um, but he's got that great passing anyway, so just having an extra body in there that can do that job, I think is going to come good for us today, hopefully. I, I really don't know. We're also going to switch to attacking the moment we get into the game. On the bench, Amoa, Simovic, Stan, Rally, Safi, Yadashinsky, and Kuja. It's going to be bloody difficult. We have to go to Portugal and essentially win by more than one goal. And I think this is the best way to go about it. Just go out there, all guns blazing, and try and just blow them out of the water. I just, I don't see it happening. But you never know. We've we've done more amazing things than this. 7-1 against Bayern. Let's just remember that. Anything is possible if you can beat Bayern 7-1. I'm just going to quickly switch it over to attacking because there's no point in us being on standard at this point. We have to go for it and hope that we can come up with something. That's already on. I'm going to say prevent short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in as well from the very start. Just go out there. We might end up picking up some bookings, but if we get through it, it will be completely worth it. In before we get a red card now that I've done that. But we've just got to go all out in this match and hope, just beyond anything, that we can come up with something special. Just, we've got to do something amazing today. Well, one, no, somehow end up as a pass. Oh, look at the space. Oh, no. Man in the box. Paulinho, and it's 1-0 to Benfica. And frankly, what can we possibly do? They are just so much better than us. Uh, we didn't turn up in the first leg where we really should have done. Like, this is the sort of result that, I wouldn't be surprised about in the second leg. It's just how badly we played against them in this first leg that, that's cost us so badly. Ball in, nobody tracks the run, and Polinio makes it 3-1 on aggregate now, and it is game, set, match, really. I just, we're not creating shots, chances, anything. Uh, we've just been so unbelievably bad in these two legs against them. Um, the passing's all off. The defending's dreadful in places, but the passing's really what's bothered me the most in some respects. Like, when we get the balls in good areas, we're just not finding good passes half the time, like we would before. Yakim, here we go. Come on, Mark. Back. Svenningsen! Oh my god, we've got an equaliser completely against the run of play. Jonas Svenningsen has got us an equaliser here in Portugal. Okay, maybe all hope is not lost yet. Um, It's still a mammoth effort from us, having conceded a goal, but we are at least back in the game, and a another goal would level the tie up at least on the aggregates, and it would take out the away goals issue. Um, we've still got to do a lot of work in this match, though, but we've got a goal. Uh, Svenningsen's, that has to be, I think that is his 10th goal in the Champions League this season, so well done him, I guess. Caldera, look at the space again. Oh, no, he's running in behind. He's going to find the pass for Polinio again. It's just so easy for them. Uh, Cunha is getting caught out time after time down there, and maybe we should try and fix that, but what the hell do we do? Like, do we push Cunha back onto... Maybe turn it off and look for the overlap. It will sort of encourage them not to come forward as much if we don't tell them to look for the overlap. Uh, maybe put them back to support? I don't know. But then we really would lose a lot of width. Cunha again. Ball in. Yak him. Oh, crazy. Oh, what the hell? We had a chance there, and for some reason, the... Disappeared. Just... Oh, well done. Vasic. Brilliant stuff. Sorgor. Krejci. Vasic. Uh, sorry, Sorgor, rather. Yak him. He's got men running forward. Out wide, ugh, dreadful pass again. Peter Sorgor, some of his passing today has been shocking. Paulinho, round he goes, just able to run straight past people. Ball in. Ah, game over. 3 1 to Benfica. They deserve it. They've just torn us apart in both games today. Um, Yeah, they're a very, very good football team. Paulinho just picks the ball up here, runs straight past the defender, and is able to dig one out to the back post. Nobody tracks an Open goal, 3 1. Done. That's us out. We're not coming back from that. It's like a cluster of goals. They score, we equalise, and then they get two more quick-fire goals. And that's that's killed us, really. Uh, goals in the 20th. They scored three goals in five minutes and just completely murdered us. Aya. Oh, no. Ball across. We're not tracking runners. We're, we're doing nothing. It's 4-1 to Benfica. We are dreadful. <laughs> oh, no. Well, one by Akinola. Okay, that's better. Cunha. Here we go. Svenningsen. He's got Yakin making the run. Can he pick the pass? Ball in. Yakim, it's 4-2. It's still the first half here, and Mark Yakim makes it 4-2, with only our second shot on target of the game. Uh, Benfica have not been great defensively today, that's what I would say, but it, does, it hasn't mattered to them. Uh, svenningsen has been superb again. Goal, assist, Yakim's header, 4-2 by halftime. We'd still need a miracle here, an absolute miracle. Yanko. Oh, God, space into the channel as well. Perazato. Ball in. Anur makes it... So oh, my goodness me. The guy is unplayable tonight. Uh, Paulinho, Onur, and Perisato, no matter how much we mark them up, they're just going to dominate us. 
Uh, right, that's it. We're doing it now. We're going for it. Akinola's off. Um, I'm making, I don't know, just making a poacher or something in the middle. Because uh, he's having a poor day anyway. Who have we got on the bench? Rally or Kuja? Rally or Kuja? Actually, I want Rally for a bit of height. Um, we're going to go route one, hit some early crosses, and just overload for the rest of this match. It's it's looking futile, isn't it, really? Um, we, we've created chances as well to have a couple of goals in this match. I think 5-2 is a bit harsh on us, really, on the night. But we've created our own problems in this game, really. Uh, spending some with a goal and assist, yakking with a goal and an assist. It would require something ridiculous now. Although, something ridiculous... Oh, no, we're already on overload. <laughs> Perisato. If anything, they're more likely to score another goal. But we're giving it our best. We're, we're doing everything we can. Cunha, Yakim, Rally. Svenningson's in. He's got to find that far. Oh, he's going to shoot, isn't he? Oh, and he has actually scored one. 77 minutes on the clock. Jonas Svenningson has grabbed another goal back for us. It's Benfica 5 B67-3. Kunit, look at this. They're leaving too many players up the pitch. We're getting overloads. Um, then again, we are on overload, I suppose. Svenningsen's grabbed himself yet another goal. I think that's 11 in the Champions League this season. This episode's going to be a long one at this rate. 7-4 on aggregate. Come on! I don't know why I'm even still saying, come on, we're not going to come back into this match. Oh, God. We know where this ball's going. They've got a man right there. Oh, now they've got another one. It's 6-3. Conrado de Rocha makes it 6-3 and 8-4 on aggregate. Jesus Christ. We've been embarrassed by them. But at least we've tried to do something attacking wise in this second leg this is just bad defending casco ball in and Anur makes it seven. <laughs> oh goodness me uh we had to do something we had to try and come here but that first leg was the embarrassment really um it was just us trying to fruitful fruitlessly go for the game in this one uh the one goal back gave me hope but we conceded two more immediately after that while just throwing everything at it svenningson has still played incredibly well tonight and done his best um but it does look as though we are going out in in flames it's fair to say and cuts out the pass but we might still have a chance to get a ball in the box satar ball in rally so good it's another one for us it's seven four um well this is just ridiculous now um We've tried, but we've left so many gaps at the back, unfortunately. Uh, it's certainly an exciting Champions League tie. Rally's save, shot was saved and Surgold on the rebound grabbing one. Attackers have had a nice time. It's just the seven goals we've conceded. Uh, probably one of our biggest defeats in the history of the football club, frankly. Uh, and that's probably going to do it, I'd say. Uh, yeah, I think so. Just blow the whistle anytime now. Oh, go on. Surgold, come on, one more. Cooch, oh, I thought we were going to make it 7-5. It's 9-5 on aggregate we've lost. Uh, we had to try and do something in this match. Once it went out the window early on, we had to throw everything at it. And we got a couple of goals, but Ben Fika won one hell of a team. Nine goals past us in two legs is outrageous, frankly. Um, and it just wasn't enough for us on the night. The first leg is what blew it for us. I think we could have been way more conservative had we not been so bad in the first leg. And it's just cost us dearly, dearly. So, um, an early exit from the Champions League. I honestly figured we'd be able to do better than that this year. The way we looked in the first stages of this tournament, I don't know what it is. After Christmas, we've just not been the same in Europe. Um, which means, of course, no Europa League or anything like that. We are just straight up out. Which means next episode is going to either be the Danish Cup final. Obviously, we're not going to be in it yet. Uh, we don't know if we're going to be in it. We're still at a quarter and a semi. But if it is the Danish Cup final, then expect it to be that. And potentially me in a polar bear onesie, since I made that promise. And if it's not, then it will just be the last game of the season. It's going to be a bumper episode of stuff like that. And then obviously analysis and stuff as we push forward to try and get through this. We can have another crack at the Champions League next year. I'm disappointed in the way we've gone out this year. But 7-4 is exciting, if nothing less. Uh, anyway, if you have enjoyed this despite all of that, um, the game has been interesting. Then drop a like on the video to say you're still enjoying the series. That'll be dope. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for, well, end of season stuff, basically. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.